We've got guests in the house, so we switch we switch gears right now as Israel United in Christ is now in studio. I want to say shalom to you all. Shalom. shalom. Most high in Christ bless. Thank all, you for All is us. well? Yes, ma'am. Of course, um, I'm happy to have, man, not the whole paparazzi they too, though. They got a camera. They got a camera <laughs> people out today. Listen to me. I noticed that you're all prepared to tell us first and foremost about Israel United in Christ. Yes. Uh, Israel, Captain Isaac, welcome yes, to the show. Likewise. Thank you for having me. Thank um, you. All praises to the Most High that we're here. Um, Israel United in Christ is a religious organization which was set up by Bishop Nathaniel and um, Bishop Kanai in the year 2003. Uh, is this an establishment or a sanctuary what we have on this earth today? However, the truth about us being um, Israel um, have been here for centuries. And um, all praises to the Most High. He's allowed us to travel throughout various places and set up different sanctuaries abroad. So our job is to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians of slave descent. That's who we are. That's who we be. I couldn't say it better. <laughs> well, of course, um, what, what differentiates you from the quote-unquote Christian church. Oh, a lot. Okay, let's let's start. A let's lot. get down to the basics. Um, get me uh first. Get me um. Get me Psalms, one forty-seven verse nineteen. All right, one forty-seven verse nineteen. What separates us from modern day Christianity is this Bible in a whole. And the reason I say that is because modern day Christianity is not is they're not keeping any laws or any of the basic foundations found in scripture, which is God's laws, statutes, and commandments, which was given to the children of Israel. Nowhere in the Bible do we read that God gave us a religion called uh, modern-day Christianity, right. which has different denominations like Baptist, Seven-day Adventist, um, give me some Catholics, and, and yeah, Jehovah's Anglican, Witness. Presbyterian, all, exactly. Kirk. All these denominations, we don't never read that in the Bible. We don't. Whenever we read the Bible, the Most High always addresses us as the children of Israel. Hear, O Israel, hearken to me, O Israel. We are the Israelites. And because of our disobedience of God's laws, we were cast out, out of our land, sent into slavery, where we were recolonized, renamed, and rebranded. All right? Give me a Deuteronomy. Um, Psalms. Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter mm -hmm. 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You hear that? The Bible, God says he only showed his word unto Jacob. The law, statutes, and commandments was only given to Israel. Who is Jacob? The descendants of Jacob. Come on. He hath not dealt so with any nation. You hear that? The Most High has never dealt with the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Hamites, the Japhites, the Edomites, who are still around today. They're just renamed like Arabs. White man, European people, Chinese people, Korean people, Japanese people. Just like we were renamed. Black, Bahamian, Haitian, Jamaican, West Indian, um, Afro-American, African-American, Negro, nigger. We were renamed. Okay, but God is telling you that he only dealt with the Israelites. Read on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Now get me Revelation 14, verse 12 real quick. Revelation 14, verse 12. This is something that, that we do in Israel United in Christ that they don't do in the Christian churches. We're about to read it right here. Come on. Revelations 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. The saints are the Israelites. When you read it in the Old Testament, the saints are making reference to the Israelites. Come on. Here are they that keep. The commandments of Here God. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Come on. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. We're supposed to keep the commandments. In the Christian church, you know what they're pushing? In about two weeks now, you're going to celebrate a holiday called Christmas. A pagan. It's well known that it's pagan. But they continue to push that tradition in our communities and in our nations to keep us in sin. And a lot of blacks, they love that thing. Not only because it's gifts and they get off from work. But they like continuing in the false traditions that the white man gave to their parents and which was passed down. That's Christianity for you in a nutshell. All lies. But the Bible tells you that, Christ, uh, that Christmas is of the devil. It's in the Bible. 
We can read, read it. it for us. Can we read it? Read it. Let's please. go to the book of Jeremiah, please. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn, remember how it starts off. Hear ye, O Israel, learn not, learn not so the way of the heathen. Exactly. From... Don't learn their ways, their traditions, their religions, their laws, their customs. Don't do that. Come on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. You have astrology and astronomy, shooting stars, horoscopes. Leave that alone. That's what God is telling us. Come on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. That's a heathenish thing. Come on. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are lies. Now we're about to read a custom in the Bible. That's a lie. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Stop. What holiday requires the cutting of a tree? Christmas. Christmas. Very good. See how he said it? Most Plus. brothers and sisters would sit there and stumble at that. No. They'd be like, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, uh. amnesia. It's talking about Christmas. Read. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. You need an axe, axe to, to take the, the tree, tree off. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. What? Holiday ornaments, requires ornaments. the cutting of a tree and decorating with silver and gold. Christmas. 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 We have to we have to come to a conclusion or a point and get the fortitude to tell the truth. Stand on truth. Come on. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They fasten it with nails and with hammers so it moves not. Okay, back then they literally had to do that. Right. Now we have those stands little stands, with the right? Hooks yeah. in them. Now the myth, the pagan myth behind that, because during the time of Jeremiah. When Babylon was going to come into power, it was not called Christmas. It was the worship of Tammuz. Before it was called the worship of Tammuz, they were worshiping Nimrod, the Babylonians. Now, Tammuz was supposed to be the reincarnation of a pagan god, which we know is not true, but they thought it was true, a reincarnation of Nimrod, okay? And then after that, thousands of years later, or hundreds of years later, I should say, they renamed it Christmas, Okay, when you had pagan Rome that came into power. Read. They are upright as the palm tree, mm -hmm. but speak not. So the myth was if you did not bring gifts and sacrifices to this tree, the spirit of Tammuz that was in this tree would haunt you. The tree would come after you. That was the pagan garbage belief back then. Come on. They must needs be born. Meaning they must needs be carried. Come on. Because they cannot go. The tree can't go nowhere. You have to carry the tree into your house. But our forefathers back then believed on that thing. They started following the Babylonian customs. We were in slavery under Babylon, the Israelites, for 70 years. So we started to follow their customs. Even some of our months, Hebrew months, are named after Babylonian names like Tammuz, like Nisan. We followed that thing. Here in America, over here in Bahamas, no difference. Baham um, Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, New Year's Eve, everything dictated to us by the white man. Get me Ezekiel. Get me Ezekiel. Chapter 8, verse 14. What you're going to find out, brothers and sisters, everything you learned in society, everything you learned, okay, especially about the Bible, have been lies. You people of Bahamas, you are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Come on. 814. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, mm -hmm. which was towards the north. Mm -hmm. And behold, there sat woman weeping for Tammuz. So this is something that the Most High revealed to Ezekiel. Ezekiel was in the Babylonian captivity, slavery. And this is what the Most High showed him. It showed him woman weeping for who? Tammuz. Tammuz was a Babylonian god. It was the same god that they were worshiping in Jeremiah verse 10. So a lot of things, like I said, has been repackaged and given back to us as traditions. And we follow everything that the white man does. Now it's time to come back to the Bible. So this Bible that you're reading is, is the King James. The same King, King James, James that just about everybody else, every yes. other denomination uses. Yes. So are you, are you saying that for the most part, we read the same thing but interpret it differently um, or choose to see and not see? Yes, a lot of people choose to see and not see. Let me show you how you should read the Bible. Then I'm going to tell you a little secret about King, uh, uh, best kept secret about King James. All right, give me Isaiah 28. You know what I want, right? Absolutely. 
Isaiah 28. This is the book. How do we read the Bible? Because the, our fear of God has been taught by the precepts of men. Everything we learned about the Bible has been taught by our oppressors. We just got to be serious about it. Isaiah 28 verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now the milk is making reference to the sincere um, word of the Most High. The little laws, the small things. You start with the small things first. Just like a baby when it's born, you give it milk. You don't give a baby steak, oil choke. A lot of people want to know about deep prophecies. No, start off with nationality. Start learning about the little laws first. Then, as your wisdom increases, the Most High will reveal certain things to you. Come on. And drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. A perfect example of that, um, Sister Empress, Empress. is, um, is that your first name? That's a that's, that's title? title? All right, so I'm going to call you that. I'm going to call you. You look like an Empress, by the way. Thank you. Look lovely. All right. Um, precept must be upon precept. A perfect example of that is what we just did with Jeremiah. We went to Jeremiah 10 to show you Christmas. Then I mentioned Tammuz, which was a pagan god. So I went to Ezekiel to show you that. The Bible speaks for itself. Okay, the prophets were redundant. They all spoke the same thing. There is no contradiction in the Bible. The contradiction are in the minds of our people, especially those in these wicked Christian churches on this island, by these demons that they call pastors. They are paid agents of the devil. Okay? The devil, the primary devil being the so-called white man. The colonizer. Yes, I said it. Get mad. Get mad. I don't care. All right? I said it. Not not um empress. empress. Not hostess empress. All right? <laughs> you are worshiping and following the colonizer. All of you pastors out there that went to theology school, you are indoctrinated the, the brothers and sisters on this island with the theology of the white man. What about atheists? What about them? If if we're if the majority of us in the Christian nation mm -hmm. are following the devil, uh, mm -hmm. the colonizer, what mm -hmm. about atheism? Um, who started atheism? You would have to go back and do the research. That was also started by the white man. Thank you. Everything that we've been learning is lies. So now a lot of people tend not to believe in God. But let me show you something. Is the Bible a true book? Because you brought up King James. First and foremost, King James was a black man. But that'll take us somewhere else. You're going to have to. Well, I'll talk to you offline about mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, go to Deuteronomy 28. Let me show you something. Because we read the KJV, right? A lot of churches, they have the NIV where a lot of words were taken out. Uh, a lot of things were removed from the Bible. But we like to stick with the King James Version Bible. It's the one that closely correlates the Hebrew, um, the Greek. And um, the original KJV had the missing books, also what's known as the Apocrypha. Get me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. I want to show all the atheists, all the Bohemian atheists, or all the Haitian Bohemian atheists. I want to show y'all something. Come on. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. So Moses told the children of Israel, after we left Egypt, he says, look, you, you want to be blessed? Listen, here's the laws. Keep the laws. You want to be cursed? Break the laws. So what did we choose to do? As always, we chose to be rebellious, just like we are until this day. Let's read some curses and let's see if prophecy was fulfilled. Come on, 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. We could also play a game of process of elimination with the people in the land of Israel today that call themselves Jewish. Okay, because they are not the Jews. That's why there's an ish. ish at the yeah, Exactly. All right, we could play a game of process of elimination. Did, do they fit these curses or do our people fit these curses? There we go. Read that again, 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, mm -hmm. and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. There shall be no might in our hand. Whose sons and daughters, hostess, empress, mm -hmm. was given unto another people? Us. Okay. Not the black one. The black people, right? Our sons and daughters was given unto another people by way of slavery. Not only the transatlantic, but you also had the sub-Saharan. 
which was controlled by mostly Arabs, okay? Mm -hmm. And it says, there shall be no might in thine hand. We didn't have no economic might, no military might. So that automatically cancels out the person in Israel calling themselves Jews because what happened after World War II? 1948, British mandate. They were given a whole land after mm -hmm. the Holocaust, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Okay, and not only that, but they, they had a military presence or should I say Mossad CIA presence that would go after those that persecuted them during the Holocaust and bring them back and stand them on trial for war crimes. What happened to our war crimes? What happened to um, our justice? We are still in the hands of our oppressors. Okay, read verse 33. The fruit of thy land mm -hmm. and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Who is this happening to? Our people. Now let's just talk about here. Because I can go on and on. I could talk about America. I could talk about Africa. Let's talk about Bahamas. Let's talk about Bahamas. It says you shall be crushed and always oppressed. Always. Who runs Bahamas? Who runs this land? Our government. Who controls the government? The queen. Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. She's still on your money. Who controls the majority of resources in this land? The import and exporting of goods, the building of, of, of hotels, buildings, foreigners. infrastructure. Who are those foreigners? Is it my people? No, no, no. No, of course not. Who is it? Don't be afraid. The, Don't the, be scared. The other man. Who's the other man? <laughs> not the saying? brother man. Oh, the other man. Not yeah, the brother man. You the got white it. white <laughs> man. And not only the white man, but he also has his compadres who are in allegiance with him, like the Asian man. We see it all throughout Bahamas. They're going all throughout Bahamas. They're buying up all these stores, right? They're hiring the local um, Bahamian people to be the face of the store and paying them little money. Meanwhile, they take all the resources, they bring it back to their, um, to their country, all right? The Chinaman is doing a world takeover, colon colonization 2.0. They're in Africa right now doing the same thing. Just the other day, a brother reached out to me and told me in Anguilla, they were trying to purchase. They were trying to purchase the whole landmass of Anguilla. That's your Chinese people. So the Bible says we shall be crushed and, opp and oppressed always. Okay. And the fruit of thy land, all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Now go to verse 37, please. Verse 37. And thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. You hear that? You shall become a proverb and a byword amongst all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. In, in the Bahamas, we're a byword and a proverb and an astonishment. We have brothers that work with tourism and do taxi. When the other nations come here, they don't only stay in the, the good parts of Bahamas where these resorts are. They'll travel throughout the hood, snap, take pictures. That's an astonishment. They don't need to be doing that. Taking they they're they're basically our our living status is a mockery to them. They take those pictures and bring it back to their country. Byword proverb, you're called Bahamian. I can't find that in the Bible. My forefathers were called Haitian. I can't find that in the Bible. God called us Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, all the way. We are the Jews, we are the Israelites. Those are powerful names. What's your last name, Empress? <laughs> this is so this is so ironic mm -hmm. because yeah if if you happen to tune in yesterday this young man mm -hmm. made a public statement about changing his name from Johnson he says because he no longer wants to give power to the slave masters ah uh, that's beautiful so tell him what the new name is jay phoenix phoenix yeah Okay, now why did you name yourself after an X-Men character? It's not an X-Men character. <laughs> it's a mythical bird. Yeah, the um, mythical bird. Yeah, it's an X-Men. They it, bring it, it out it, a movie. It, yeah, it is an X-Men. Jean Grey, she turned into Phoenix. <laughs> well, at least you know your secular stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but I associate with it because of the rebirth, um, being born from ashes. I associate with it. I have the tattoo. I love the moniker. And I figured if I'm going to start over, that's what I want. Let me show you what God requires of you. Isaiah 44, verse 5. Let me show you what God called you. First, get me, before you get Isaiah 44, verse 5, get me Isaiah 65, 15. So the fact that you still have your oppressor's last name mm -hmm. is a curse. Smith, 
Johnson, uh, Barry, Anderson, uh, Beckford, Glenford, um, people in Haiti, the French last name, Jean-P, Jean-Paul, Jean-Pierre, Jean-Jacques. These are all colonization names. But God never called us that. He called us Israel, meaning he is a prince of power. He is a prince of God. That's who you are. And you're not Phoenix. You ain't a bird. You ain't a fiery <laughs> bird. All right? Give me Isaiah 65, 15. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. You hear that? Come on. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. The other name that God is calling us are the names that we have now. But God is trying to call us up out of that. Get me Isaiah now. 44 and 5. Isaiah 44 verse 5. Mm -hmm. One shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. So one shall say, I am the Lord. Meaning one person shall say, I'm an Israelite. Meaning they come to the knowledge of who they are. Come on. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Many brothers change their name. Not legally. Many brothers will say, now nah, don't call me. Don't call me Johnson. Now call me Yawasa. Or call me um, Nathaniel. Or call me, uh, give me some more names. Uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Back okay. to the Bible. Come on. And another shall subscribe with his hand. And the third category of man and woman, their faith is greater than the first two. These people took it a step further to legally change their name. It says, and the what? And another shall subscribe with his hand. In order to subscribe, you would have to legally change your name. Another shall subscribe, come with, on. With his hand unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And surname himself by the name of Israel. This is what God is requiring of us. You are an Israelite. And let me finish proving it. Maybe you might think you're an X-Men. But you are, <laughs> in, in all actuality, in all actuality, you know what, brother? Mm. Once you start to keep the commandments and believe in Christ and repent as an Israelite, you are a superhero, believe it or not. You are a superhero because we were created to be gods on earth. But because of Adam's first sin, because of Adam's sin, we all die like men. But if you repent and keep the commandments, Christ said it himself, you are going to be a God on earth. Not only are you going to be a mortal, brother, we're going to run through these nations the same way they ran through us. Come on. Give me what you got. Back to Deuteronomy 28. We're going to take a break. As he, as he looks for Deuteronomy, we're yeah. going to take a break right here. This is Free Your Mind, live on Guardian Radio. We are 96.9. Welcome back. This is Free Your Mind, live with Israel United in Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, before we took a break, I think you were going to Deuteronomy. Yes, Deuteronomy. Okay, let's head. Let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. So what I'm showing you are the curses that fell upon the nation of Israel, which are our people, by the way. All right, and that's what I'm trying to prove to you. So we read verse 37. Now let's jump down to verse 46. Verse 45. Verse, 40, verse 44, I'm sorry. Verse 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So, we would go into captivity, and the persons that took us into captivity, they said, they shall lend to us, we shall not lend to them. Meaning, we would have the economics to do that. We would have to depend on our oppressors. You need a student loan, who do you go to? Go to the white man, who might bring in the money here for your government. Okay, by way of England. Come on. Moreover, all these curses, sh moreover, all these curses, come on, shall come upon thee uh -huh. and shall pursue thee. No matter where you go. And That's why people are leaving Haiti to come here. People are leaving here to go to the U.S. People are leaving the U.S. to go back to Africa. Then when they get to Africa, they're like, damn, I'm colonized all over again. Where do I go? Do I got to go to the planet Mars? No, you got to repent. Repent, keep the commandments, come together. Let the nation of Israel come together as we wait for the second coming. We must start to depend on us for our survival. Come on. And overtake thee mm -hmm. till thou be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Mm -hmm. And they. And what? And they. The curses are the they. And they, the curses, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. Forever. How do I know that I'm at 96.9 Guardian Radio? How do I know this is not Hot 97 FM? Ebro in the morning. 
How do I know that? Because there's signs. There's signs in this building that direct me here. When you're crossing the street, there's a sign there. If you're looking for a particular store, there's a sign there. God left the tools right in our hand. So we can, when we wake up out of this stupor, this slumber that we're in, we can read now and we could identify ourselves with the people in this book. You ever wondered why they never burnt and got rid of the Bibles? Although they changed a lot of things and um, came out with the NIV, new Bibles, all they had to do was burn it. You don't think the white man, the elite, the bourgeoisie, you don't think they know that we are the people of the book? Of course. I've spoken to many Jewish people and they said, yeah, we know we're converts. We know you're the real Jews. I had a Jewish person tell me how they know that we're the real Jews, but they're not going to say nothing. Why? Because their job is to keep us in this position that we're in. Our job is to get ourselves out. We're depending on the white man to save us. We have to save ourselves as far as coming back to the commandments. Then the ultimate savior is going to come in as Jesus the Christ. Come on. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Oh, there we go. We didn't serve God with joyfulness, but guess what? Everybody's getting ready for Christmas. We just heard Christmas music. Every store that I've been to so far since I've been here, jingle bells, jingle bells. Jing Man, nobody don't want to hear that garbage. In the hotel where I'm, where I'm at, there's a big 30, 40 foot tree. I feel like kicking that thing down. But I know if I kick it down, I'm going to get arrested. Exactly. And I can't afford that. I got a wife, a beautiful wife and kids back home. I got to go back home. I can't get locked up over here in Bahamas. Who's going to bail me out? I got to go back home. So I walk past that ugly, cut hideous tree every day and I cut my eyes. Just like you said, I cut my eyes like, damn, I don't want to look at this thing. But they have it everywhere. They're indoctrinating our people. Read. And with gladness of heart uh -huh. for the abundance of all things. We're supposed to serve God with the gladness of heart for the want of all things. Come on. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. Because you don't want to serve me, God says. Go ahead, serve your enemies. We don't want to serve God. How many of us are keeping Passover? Empress, do you keep Passover? The answer is no. Do you keep Passover? No. How many of y'all kept the Feast of Pentecost? You? No. no. You? No. There's the proof right there. Feast of Tabernacle. See, y'all never heard of these things. We are not keeping the laws that God ordained the nation of Israel to keep. Therefore, we're going to keep getting colonized. It's just like a parent with a child. Do you have children, Empress? I do. Your child lives with you? Your child lives mm -hmm. with you? Okay. Your child disobeys you. You have laws and rules set up in your own house. Mm -hmm. If your child does something contrary to your laws, what do you do? Reprimand. You reprimand them mm -hmm. by way either a scolding by way of spanking, maybe you might take your take allowance from away. them or don't let them watch TV. You can't go play out. It's the same thing God did. Hold that. Give me Hosea 5.15. God does the same thing. Why, when it comes to the Bible, we're like, oh, I'm retarded. I don't know what's going on. Our Father, God in heaven, is chastising us. Come on, Hosea 5.15. Let me, let me ask you a question real quick. When it comes to the image, because you, you make reference... I think a lot of times when people see the church out on the road, like for instance, I know a lot of times you guys are out on um, Carmichael Road. Another camp. That's another camp. That's another that ain't all. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, no, I, I understand this, sir. It's okay. Um, that's, that's totally different. Totally. So you, you're never on the street. You don't, you don't preach on the As street. As yet, we haven't held a camp. As yet, we give out flyers. Ah. We're not holding a camp. As yet. They will be holding camp soon, though, Lord willing. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You're, the, the, the pictures that are depicted of Jesus as we know him, um, not only in the Bahamas, but the world, the Michelangelo portrait, is what, what is your image of Jesus? My image? As well, the Israelite. Okay, the Israelite image of Jesus is what God says. Let's get Revelation chapter 1. This is the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse... Uh, start at verse oh, 1. See, verse funny. 1. It's right here. Start at verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which God gave unto him. The word, it says the revelation, right? What is the root word of revelation, Empress? Reveal. Reveal, which means to? To show. Ah, to show. Very good. Very good. Come on. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, mm -hmm. to show unto his servants. She just said to show. To show unto his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. Mm -hmm. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Okay, now jump to verse 14, please. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ's hair on his head and on his face was white like wool. Not only in color, but the wool. 
That's the word we want to concentrate there. All right, that's the operative word that we're looking for. Whoa, who has woolly hair today? Empress. Black people. Black people. See how simple that is? You see how simple that is? Black people have woolly hair, also known as kinky or nappy. In the Bahamas, we call it peasy. Peasy. Mm -hmm. in, in Haiti, they call it the same thing. But with the, with the, yeah, but with a Creole word. Okay. Okay, it's the same thing. They call it tet gren. That means, that means that pe nappy head or peasy head. Okay, <laughs> come on. As white as snow. White as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. The whites of Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire. The reason you don't see it there, because the flies are black, black and white. white. Now, we're not saying, Empress, that this is Christ. We're saying that's a depiction of what's written. We're not saying that's exactly him. Mm -hmm. We're giving you a depiction. Why were Christ's eyes red or, or as a flame of fire? Yeah. Genesis 49, verse 12, please. Let's go back to the prophecy, to the Old Testament, which most Christians don't want to read. You pick up a book and you start in the middle because your pastor said so. Come on. Genesis 49 verse 12. Mm -hmm. His eyes shall be red with wine. Moses was writing about the Messiah. This was a prophecy, prophecy about Christ. It says his eyes shall be red with wine. What was Christ's first miracle, brother man? He turned water into wine. We all read about that. Those who went to Sunday school and so forth. We, we learned about that. Go back to Revelation. And his feet like unto fine brass. As if they burn in a furnace. So brass is a different shades of brown. We all know that. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Agree. Now it says as if they burned in a furnace. You put anything in a furnace, you're going to get black out of it. You put white rice in a furnace, you're going to get black out of it. Okay? Now let's find out how Christ's great, 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 great grandfather looked like. Let's go to King Solomon. Let's go to the Song of Solomon. Read verse 1, because a lot of people in a Christian church, they teach that this is talking about a woman. This is talking about a woman. It's not talking about a woman. Solomon. This was a humongous similitude slash allegory. This was Solomon wrote this letter. It was portraying himself and the love for the Most High. Come on. The Song of, so the song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. I am black, but comely. Read that again. I am black. But comely. Read that again. I am black, but comely. Mm -hmm. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. as the tents of Kedar. Kedar was one of the sons of Ishmael that also, that word translates into dark skin. King Solomon was a black man. So how in the hell do you get a white image of Christ with blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin? Where do you get that? Let me ask another question. Mm -hmm. um, I think in Genesis, um, there's, a, there's a verse that talks about the Garden of Eden with the Tigris or Euphrates River mm -hmm. running through it. And um, that still exists today mm -hmm. in Africa. Absolutely. So it would be safe to say that creation started in Africa. Absolutely. Galatians 4.26 and then get me Zephaniah 3 and 8. Absolutely. You are 100% right. Jerusalem, Israel, believe, believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, Israel is in Africa. Hostess Empress. Yes. Okay? Israel is in Africa. It's in Northeast Africa. But now it's separated by what was, what was built in the, um, in, the late, in the early 1900s called the Suez Canal. Let me ask the Suez Canal. But let me ask another question. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have stood at the mouth of the Nile River mm -hmm. on my uh, first um, visit to Uganda. We just came back from there. And the Nile River, the, like I said, the head of it, is still visible in Uganda. Absolutely. We have Africa. Israelites. Yes. So how, how do pastors and how do Christians explain these places that we read about in the Bible not to equate to Africa, the motherland. Because they don't care about that. They don't care about you because they don't care about themselves. They don't love their people. They call evil good and they call good evil. They are paid agents of the devil. And every single one of you pastors, if you're listening, I dare you to call in. I dare you to call the show. All of you are paid agents of the devil. You are working for your father, the devil, the so-called white man. All right? Prove me alive. Okay. Call in and prove me wrong. 323 325 325-4316, 325-4259. Captain Isaac has summoned you to call and challenge 
right now, again, you can, uh, I, I don't necessarily want you to text at this point. Rather you call 323-6232. Anybody want to challenge 325-4316. 325-4259. Good afternoon to you, caller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Anybody call in yet? I mean, uh, you're the yeah, first. Sure. You're the first. Thank one. you so much. But am I also labeling myself one who's the paid agent because I'm the first to call in? Say that again? Can you hear? Am I labeling myself as the paid, paid agent? agent of the devil because are you a pastor? Are you a pastor? The question was asked. No, are, are you a pastor? No. Okay, no, you're not no, a paid no, agent. No, no, okay. No, no. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Go, go ahead. Free your but mind. But I kind, of, I kind of agree with what this gentleman is saying. You kind of agree, not too yeah, sure. No, no, no. Let me give you. I listened to him much earlier. Mm -hmm. I used to be in a church growing up, and whenever the pastor who's coming from down in Bain Town to preach on. Sunday night, the church is empty. But when a white man is coming, the church is full, people looking through the window because they're expecting something from this whiteness. And I think that same expectation is in all of our churches. So it's coming from the white man. Pay it, agents, we are. I thank you. I love you. Thank you. All right. Absolutely. Beautiful. See, that brother got a humble spirit. Before he, uh, I think he called in earlier, and there was, uh, we had a, a few disagreements. And he was very aggressive, but I'm glad he humbled down. Oh, you, That's you recognize Christ, his voice? Yeah, I recognize his voice. All right, That's let's, what, try, let's get another one. Good yeah. afternoon to you, caller. Hey, I'm Bruce. Hey, welcome. Yahweh, Yahweh, name be praised. Yahweh, son is in the house. Amos, See, how are you? I'm awesome. We are the Hebrew Israelite of the world. Y'all have heard your very own who have grown up, grew up right among y'all, testify on this, not on this very station of the things, many things this young man is saying in this, my name, bro, is Amos Jr. Miller. As far as I'm concerned, the world know me as King Amos. My father who art in heaven is a king of kings and lord of lords. I have told the Bohemian people, there is, it is impossible for the Most High to choose, to have to choose a Christ and choose a Caucasian who has to stand in the presence of the S-U-N son, Psalms 84, verse 11, for the Lord God is a son, but we put things in context, and they choose not to listen. So just last week I said to the Bahamas, because of the, the egregious political and religious crap in this country, I shall rain judgment on them. Yet here comes Yahweh sent his son, and so when you testify of Jesus, the Yeshua, and they, the United States of America, Great Britain, and the Bohemian government knows exactly who holds the rod of iron when it comes to the 1242. And they know exactly what is connected to the rod of iron, all the brass. And so if they want to test anything you have to say, they have to first pass Amos Jr. Miller. Yahweh name be praised. Thank you so Thank much, you, Amos. Brother. I want to read a text or two just not to leave our text line. Um, this one says, hello, how are you? We are made in God's image. What image would that be since God is a spirit? So they say, to see this good evening. Once again, this brother's talking nonsense, just like how you want to kick the Christmas tree. I want to take that Bible and beat him in the head with, um, with it. He is stupid and silly. Thank you. I love you. Wow. All they, right. they called Christ worse. So all praises. I'm doing something right. Good afternoon to you, caller, and welcome. Chris, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm doing fine, and welcome to your guest in the studio. Um, how welcome. Doing? How are you? Yes, I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, I want to confess. Yes, um, I am a Christian, but I want to bring something to you. Yes, okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Every, every, when Jesus died, everybody who promoted him and confessed that he's the Son of God were Christian. All of Paul and Peter and all their message, they were Christian. Not only that, if you read Jude, they tell you exactly not even who you are or what you are, but the story is you tell you everything that is going on, okay? Like I said, I listen, listen back, but I don't think you read Jews. When you read Jews, listen to what he said about Michael, listen to what he said about Enoch, and listen to what he said about everything that's going on. That's, that's the message for the day. Okay, what's your question? No question. Okay. Next call. Good afternoon to you, caller. Welcome. 
time as Empress Tray and your guest. Hey. Hey, hey. Uh, hey. All right. You know, I think what the gentleman saying has a lot of valid points. I always had a problem with how could some white people come down from Europe, take more than 900 books, so-called translated, even though you don't know the language, r- bring it down to 84, then remove another 14, and then tell you you cannot add or subtract from it or else you go in the hell, and all the other books they took it from is nothing but witchcraft and wrong. And then the world follow after and they just have a problem with it. And I don't know about all white people being the devil, but I know a lot of them are the <laughs> devil, especially themselves in Israel. Okay, bye. Thank you. Let's take another call. Good afternoon to you, caller, and welcome. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, Hi, good oh, afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, I want to ask your guest, uh, coming out on an observation that most of the scriptures he's referring to is in the Old Testament. I want to ask him if he could put um, what happened at the Jerusalem Council in the context of his conversation. Absolutely. What Jerusalem Council are you making reference to? Are you making to the reference of the Feast of Pentecost? Or are you making reference... I'm making reference mm-hmm. to the Jerusalem Council mm-hmm. where the Jews um, was trying to get the early Christians to follow Jewish tradition. And there was a council at Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. What book? Attended by Paul and James, who was the late who was the leader of the Jews at that time. Okay, what book and, do you and want me to that go to? Council, what book do you want me to go to? Let's get to the point. Um, it is in Acts. Where? Um, I think it's Acts 15. Acts, and mm-hmm. the decision was made among the early Christians mm-hmm. that, the old, that the only stipulation that the Gentile Christians should have. What's the Gentile Christians? Is, is that they should abstain what's from... The, what's the Gentile Christians? Are you trying to... Basically, let, let, me, let me jump Christians, to the point. Let me jump to the point for you. Are you saying that the Gentile Christians were other nations? Yeah. No, you're absolutely wrong. You're incorrect. Can I ask you a question? Who, no, no, who, let me respond to up. you. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Because you, okay, brought, out, you, brought, out a, okay, you brought out a point on national airwaves. So I want to clear up the confusion because our people are already confused. Who were the saints at Ephesus? Ephesus was where? First, where was Ephesus and who were the saints at Ephesus? Um, I don't see the relevance of that. Oh, no, the, it's very relevant. Well, because those, the relevant. Were, those were the isles of the Gentiles. Now, my question to you, just if you don't know, just say, I don't know, and I'll answer the question. Who were the saints at Ephesus, and where was Ephesus? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Show me, right. show me the relevance to that. I'll show you. I'm not going through no rabbit hole. No, it's not a rabbit hole. I don't, I don't like... Because I want to get back I, to I the got point. You. I got you. Just bro. a minute. Let me tell you the point that I'm going to get to, Jesus. so you can answer it in advance, if you like. Mm-hmm. There was a distinct break between the Jewish tradition that came through Moses and the prophet after mm-hmm. and the Christianity that was inaugurated by Jesus Christ afterwards. Okay. Paul let me, had let me, a let me answer because he's, he's long Just a minute. He's, you're long I you. got you. I, I'm going to answer your question. Okay, let me answer his question. Wow. Extremely long-winded. Okay, first get me Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Because a lot of people, when we get to the letters of Paul, we're confused because we're unlearned. Um, when you read Corinth, when you read um, uh, Ephesians, when you read the book of Timoth- Galatians, those were all Israelites. The church at Colossus, those were all Israelites that were scattered in the diaspora. Okay? When you go back to Jerusalem, the only people dwelling in Jerusalem during the time of Paul, you had Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and a small portion, a small tiny portion of the other, um, the other tribes, the, the other ten tribes. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, mm-hmm. to the saints which are at Ephesus. So, mm-hmm, come on. And to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. 
Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now who are the saints? Get me that. Get me that in Psalms, I believe it is. Captain Isaac, mm -hmm. we're wrapping up. So oh, wrapping it up? Believe yeah, it or not. <laughs> okay, okay. Get me um, Revelation 13, verse 10. I make sure I'm going to close it out I, on this. Actually, no, get me rep, uh, Revelation 13 and 10. This is the book of Revelation. Please visit our website, exactly. um, israelunite.org, israelunite.org. And we have a, a location here at East Street. East Street on All Purpose Way, side of Bahamas Teachers Credit Union. Okay, go ahead. 13 and 10. Mm -hmm. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You hear that, brother? Especially the brother that just called in. Who led you into captivity? All the other nations, mainly the so-called white man who you love and adore. Come on. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And this is going to happen when Christ comes back. Not now. We are to live in peace with the other nations. Okay. Come on. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are the patience and the faith of the saints. The saints are Israel. Brothers and sisters of Bahamas, we pray y'all repent tomorrow. Where are we going to be at at camp? Uh, Awaki. Awaki? All right, we're going to be... What time? What time? From 12 to 3. From 12 to 3, we're going to be outside on the street teaching. Come face to face. Bring your questions. Bring your doctrines so you may be edified in the Lord. Face to face, not over the phone. One more thing before you leave, too. I'm reading a couple texts. Please make a clear distinction and differentiation between you and the same... Um, persons I refer to at um, on Carmichael Road, because they're thinking as well that you are the same, one of the same. We teach the commandments in the faith of Christ. You're going to find out a lot of Israelite camps do not expound and magnify the laws of God. In IUIC, we teach family, we teach order, we teach structure, we teach discipline, and we teach the laws of God in the faith of Christ. Anything else you'd like to add before we visit, close it out? Tomorrow visit. again, Arawaki, what part of the key as such? We're not sure as yet, but you but can reach you'll, us we'll at 677 9911. All right. And, and the Gentiles in the New Testament is talking about the 10 lost tribes, the northern kingdom of Israel. Okay? For you white lovers out there. All right. So there you have it. It is the Israel United in Christ. They're going to be out at Arawaki tomorrow from 12 to 3. Thank you so much for coming in and to everybody that listened today. Thank you so much. Another hot edition right here of Free Your Mind Live on Guardian Radio. We're 96.9. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org